In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Christ in our midst. Amen. Have you ever been on a cruise, or far off from land on the water? And if you look off one side of the ship, you see just water as far as the eye can see. And if you look off the other side of the ship, and if it's daytime, you may be able to see the coastline and the cities because there's still light out. But once night comes and there's no light guiding your way and it's pitch black, you can look towards the coastline and you know there's land there, but you can't see anything until you approach the city. And what gives it away? Is it the noise? It's not the smell? But it's the lights you can see in the distance for miles and miles away. And there's nothing that city can do to hide its light from being seen. See, Christ tells us in the Gospel today, you are the light of the world. And a city set on a hill cannot be hid. We are reminded today that our light for Christ should not be hid. We are to glorify Christ in all we do, so His light shines bright in this dark world that we live in. When we live in the church and follow the light of Christ, He enlightens our heart, He enlightens our mind. Even though there may be darkness all around us, His light overpowers that darkness. He tells us in the Gospel of St. John, I am the light of the world. He that follows me will not walk in darkness, but should have the light of life. I know we all would say that we want to follow in the light of Christ, and that we probably feel that we really do. Maybe we think to ourselves, I come to liturgy, I don't do anything too wrong, I'm generally a good person, and all these things are good. But Christ is pushing us and encouraging us to follow Him further than what we think we need to. He created us in His image and likeness so that we can reflect His light more visibly than just doing the basic things we all know we should be doing anyway. We are all children of God and inside every one of us is the light of Christ, desiring to burn with love for Him. And we often forget that the way we live our life reflects to the world and to those around us how strong His light inside of us truly is. When we do good things for God's glory, when we give with joy, when we speak well of one another, when we forgive each other, that light, that Holy Spirit's divine fire inside of us begins to burn brighter. And more people begin to see God's glory. They begin to see His light. But when we sin, when we turn away from God, we smother that light, sucking the life, the oxygen out of it, making our light dim and weak, and at times dark. And St. Paul writes to the Hebrews, our God is a consuming fire, and His light will consume the darkness inside of us. But do we have faith? Do we have desire? Do we have the humility to allow Him to consume the darkness inside of us? If we knock, He will answer, but He won't walk in on His own. The church gives us all the tools we need to allow Christ to overcome the darkness that's inside of us, to tend to the gift of light that Christ has given us. We have confession, the opportunity to ask forgiveness of our sins and receive absolution from them, allowing our light to break through our darkness. We have the liturgy in the Eucharist, the chance to consume the body and blood of Christ, to allow it to flow in our veins, into our heart, throughout our entire body for the remission of our sins and for life everlasting. In the Paschal service on Holy Saturday evening, we see how the light of God overcomes the darkness. We chant, come receive the light from the light that is never overtaken by night. 
Come glorify Christ who is risen from the dead. We chant this beautiful prayer while the church is completely dark. The priest holding the only lit candle. And he lights one candle. And that candle lights another. And so forth. And before you know it, the flame of Christ enters the entire church. Transforming it from darkness into that everlasting light. And each one of us holding a candle is given the light in the church. And it's easy to keep our candle lit. But we aren't called to just stay in the church with it. What do we do? We walk outside into the world and we show everyone the light of Christ. But the moment we walk outside, it's much more difficult to keep that light lit. The wind blows, or maybe it's raining like last year. And if we don't protect our light and be watchful, be diligent, and work to keep it lit, that light will blow out. And this is what Christ is asking of us today. He tells us we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. It sounds pretty and sounds nice to be called the light of the world. But at times we have to evaluate ourselves and we have to ask ourselves, are we truly being His light in this dark world around us? Do we sometimes hold a grudge towards someone else, harboring that anger inside of us, not willing to turn the other cheek and forgive as we're called to do? Are we sometimes embarrassed to be a Christian, to cross ourselves in public, or to go along with what someone else is saying because it's easier and you don't want to be ridiculed for your faith? At times, we don't give like we should, and we forget that all we have in our life is a blessing from God. Or do we participate in gossiping of others because we don't want to offend anyone by not joining in? At times in our life, we take that light inside of us and we cover it. So its, it's radiance and beauty cannot be seen. But Christ tells us and reminds us today to let our light be seen before men. Let our light be seen before men, that they may see your good works, so they can give glory to your Father who is in heaven. We're called to be different than the world. We're called to be set apart from the world, to be holy. And yeah, this is a hard task our Father commands of us, but we are all His children and He doesn't leave us alone in doing it. He's given us the church, His Word, the Scriptures, the Holy Spirit to comfort us. My brothers and sisters in Christ, allow us today to hear Christ's words, to be watchful of that light of Christ inside of us, keeping it pure, that our love for Him may be radiant, so it can transfigure us to be His light in this dark world so that people we encounter every day may see Christ's love and give glory to God. Amen.